This Ridleyo is brought to you by friends of Blockchain.info. It's a great place for Bitcoins to go. Here are some more things that need to be said about Adam Kokesh's planned march on Washington. Things that aren't being said by enough people. First, I've had so many other things to say about it already that people might be confused as to exactly where I stand. So I should summarize. I can't condemn or support the march. What I can do is question aspects of it. That's where I stand. I'm questioning aspects of it. If a couple things were done differently, I probably could support it. But... As it stands, I have, well, my unease over the thing was instinctive at first, but I've, I've been able to come up with more concrete reasons why I have trouble with this, this plan. First of all, let's talk about the things that are not wrong with this plan. Uh, so many of the criticisms of it are, in fact, endorsements. <laughs> They're intended as criticisms, but they prove Adam's point. One opponent of the plan says, quote, If you go knowing that you will be arrested, your firearm taken, and you are thrown in jail and fined, then have to face more travel charges and return to D.C., what have you accomplished? Unquote. Of course, there are other posts that point out more pointedly all the bad things the government could do to Adam and his group, or that they might even do to people who are not really related to the situation. Those folks are making Adam's point for him. He's trying to say that people fear the government, the government is wicked, violent, and evil, and all these people are saying, oh no, we, we can't do this because the government is wicked, violent, and evil. That's not the reason why it's a bad idea. That's, that's closer to being a, a uh, supportive statement. The problem is not that this would trigger a violent reaction. Civil disobedience is supposed to do that. The problem is not the presence of firearms. It's not Washington's anti-rebellion technology. It's not Adam's potential to gain fame from the event. That's another criticism that is in fact an endorsement. Everybody is angry because Adam is a publicity hound. Publicity hound is code... For successful PR strategist. That's what an enemy calls a successful PR strategist. So again, that's not the problem. The negative reaction from anti-freedom people, that's not a problem. People have shown their true colors in many cases by advocating that Adam be killed. The problem is not the discussion of false flag attacks that is, that is resulting. That's constructive. It's not the unevenness of the projected opposing forces. It's not the fact that the time and place of the beatdown have been announced. These are not the plan's problems. These are the plan's advantages. The problems lie outside the conventional arguments you're hearing. But they are severe enough to outweigh all the advantages, in my mind. These problems are, number one, the march involves interference in what is part of a local municipality. Or, or maybe I should say what is in part a local municipality. An outside force is interfering in the decisions made by the D.C. political infrastructure. Now, that infrastructure is only somewhat democratic, but their process has led them to these gun laws. We know that, that you and I are probably not really, especially involving the government, we're not really supposed to intervene in North Korean affairs. No matter how bad their process is, they have a certain process that's going on inside their borders, and you and I don't favor the government interfering in that. Now, do we favor average people interfering with that? Well, I don't know, but... Certainly, if a couple of people were to invade North Korea, or a private army were to invade it from the South, that, I think, would make most of us a little bit uneasy in the freedom movement. The situation in D.C. is much more open than what you'd find in North Korea. 
which makes them an even less appropriate place to send an invading armed force with loaded weapons. That leads us to problem number two. The plan entails a promised initiation of movement by an approaching armed loaded force toward a st what is probably going to be a static armed and loaded force. That brings us to problem number three. Having su you know, thus surrendered the perceived ethical high ground, the approaching force places itself at risk of being taken down without much PR fallout. This plan gives the authorities really a wide array of options as to how they could handle this. They could take down perceived ringleaders one by one or simultaneously before the event at their homes, make examples of them, but strictly follow the legislative or um, legal process. They'd get public support if they did that. They could uh, form a static barrier, a human barrier, on the bridge in question or at the bridge in question, just on their side of the line. And one by one, as people cross into their side, they could, you know, uh, peace, you know, uh, not peaceably, but uh, uh, relatively nonviolently arrest them. Not all of them will be crossing the line. The number might not be all that large that they actually have to arrest. Now, if they're doing this to eliminate standards, it looks pretty bad. But if that's the federal government's way of handling what is perceived as an armed revolution, again, they'll just look restrained. They'll look calm. The authorities could, theoretically, even open fire. And that would certainly put public opinion more against them than otherwise. But I'm not seeing a liberty benefit there. Once you've got uh, some people being shot with public support, the authorities then get to have, if they want it, a civil war kind of on their terms. It's not clear to me whether the authorities want a civil war. I believe some of them may. When Barack Obama tried to sort of maneuver himself into Lincoln's position at his inaugural address, quoting or paraphrasing Lincoln's pre-Civil War phrases, that was an indicator to me that he may in fact welcome the idea of a civil conflict. A terrorist attack was in fact what put Bill Clinton back on track in his, uh, uh, you know, the second half of his first term. Tim McVeigh's attempt, maybe you could call it, to start a civil war was pretty well welcomed by the Clinton administration. Although they they did not uh, they did not really take him up on the civil war attempt. It did single handedly pretty much save the Clinton administration. This is very different, of course. It's not terroristic at all. It's not even guerrilla warfare. But again, the point I'm trying to make is that governments sometimes want to be attacked. They want a perception that they are under armed siege. I'm not big on telling Liberty folk to back down, so I won't tell Adam to, but a good idea within the context of his current plan might be to either handcuff every activist that's carrying a rifle or have each rifle carrying activist or every person who's got a rifle has someone else assigned to them and their role is to take them down if they try to take the rifle off their back. That might be another way to prevent a an agent provocateur or an accident from happening. You could have an unarmed person going with every armed person and their goal, you know, their role is to watch that person and, and uh, raise the alarm and tackle them if they try to take the, the firearm off. That would give people a way to participate uh, in, the, in, in the process of protecting the law enforcement 
uh, regardless of what side they're on. And they'd also be protecting the real activists from the agent provocateur, if there is one. By the way, as of May 16th, Adam's Facebook page shows roughly 8,000 people committed to either attending or maybe attending, which isn't really the same as committed. But I believe if you add those two up, it comes to 8,000, and I believe that number would need to be 10,000 for Adam to reach his original goal. Up until now, Adam's activism in the D.C. area has been more or less brilliant, except for the fact that it's in the D.C. area. He gets all kinds of attention that cannot really be effectively leveraged the way attention is leveraged in New Hampshire. <laughs> of course, having said that, I'm not so sure I want him in New Hampshire now that he's leading what he himself calls as an armed revolt or armed revolution. We certainly haven't needed that here to make much, much more progress than the average armed revolution does. The advantage of New Hampshire ac activism is that when it gets negative publicity, most of that publicity is seen by people outside New Hampshire. And they cannot intervene negatively, generally, in New Hampshire's political culture. The, there's a filtering effect that goes on when we get negative publicity here, or positive publicity, and that is that well, it basically just draws our friends here. It creates movers who then become residents and activists. The people in California who might see negative publicity about us and hate free staters aren't really going to do anything about it because we're in New Hampshire. I doubt any of them really hate us. I mean, how, how can they? It's just, what are we doing that even affects them? So, we followed Sun Tzu's advice of putting ourselves in a position where almost everything is a win. It's not always a win for every individual involved, but it's almost always a win for the movement as a whole. Look at what's happening in Keene right now with the Robin Hood situation, where the, the city has managed to put freekeen.com into its most visible position ever since they've attacked the Robin Hooders, sued them, and tried to ban them from being within 50 feet of parking meter enforcement officers. They've given Free Keen and the Robin Hooders what amounts to hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of publicity. That's what they'd have, they would have had to have spent to get that kind of publicity that they're currently getting on mainstream press. City of Keene did it for them. And this relatively ineffective attack will trigger probably another, I would guess, 20 movers to New Hampshire who never would have come here otherwise. I'm guessing that's what will happen over the next two years. Just as a result of this government attack. But if this had happened in Washington, the publicity would be very ethereal and wouldn't have, there'd be no follow-on for the publicity. Nothing like this, anyway. The follow-on in New Hampshire is very simple. You move here. Adam might have a step two up his sleeve, but he has no such follow-on as we do. This Ridleyo is brought to you by friends of Blockchain.info It's a great place for Bitcoins to go. Some call it the best site to create a free online Bitcoin wallet. They have apps for Android and iPhone, plus, get this, blockchain lets the encryption for your account happen inside your browser. That way even the site's owner can't access the account. It's just for you. Blockchain.info, it's a great place for Bitcoins to go.